Hello everybody and welcome to your 35th Lego 5 tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be expanding on what we've learned last tutorial. Uh, so I've already got the code written out uh, just because uh, it'll be easier. There's a lot to explain and instead of me typing and explaining it'll, it'll be a lot easier for me to uh, just explain, I'll explain what's going on. Uh, the source code is on the website. On my website codemadeeasy.ca so if you don't feel like typing this all out then you can download the source code so uh, we got rid of the algorithm include and now we have the vector and we have the s stream now uh, so uh, for those of you who don't know what a vector is a vector is a resizable array uh, so basically we can add values to it delete values um, it's basically like a dynamic array right uh, and uh, it's like a collection and if you guys don't know about vectors I highly advise you to learn about them because sometime in the future you're going to need to know about them whether you like it or not so uh, in order to create a two-dimensional vector uh, we're gonna take in the we make a vector It's basically a vec a two-dimensional vector is a vector of vectors okay so with this uh, code right here with our map, any length, uh, we can make uh, any part of the map any length, right? Uh, they don't all have to be the same uniform uh, width or whatever, right? They could all be different widths. And the reason why is because when we have an array, like a 10 by 10 array, uh, it's set that their 10s, uh, that they have to be maximum 10 spaces wide and maximum 10 spaces down. When we have vectors, when we have a vector of vector, each row, each row is is a separate vector. Okay, so it's own its own separate instance. So for example, this row can contain ten elements. This row could contain five elements if we want. This row could contain uh seven elements. This row could contain a hundred elements. It doesn't really matter because each uh each vector of vector a vector is a resizable array so when we have a vector of vectors and our multi-dimensional vector each of these are their own individual uh, vector so imagine these uh elements as as their own arrays so imagine say we added like two zeros right here imagine this line is an array of 12 and this line is an array of 10 etc etc right so each of the each of the lines are their own vectors okay so and, and and for those of you who don't know about vectors it might be uh, and that explanation might be kind of vague uh, so I advise you go and look into vectors more so I put the ampersand over there because we're gonna be changing the value of it so we open our file if the file is open then we create uh, these variables right here so uh, we have our while loop right here, and then we get the lines. So we get the line in the file, uh, but what we want, what we need to do is be able to put the uh, separate them and be able to put them into our our vector. So what we do is we create a string stream, and uh, we name it str, and we put our line in the string stream, and we create a temporary vector because our map is a vector of vectors. But we need to, um, in order for us to put something into a map file. We need to put in a vector. Since a vector of vectors, we need to place in a vector file in there. So we create a, a integer type ver vector called ten vector. So we loop till we reach the end of the string, and I, I, I till the end of the string stream. And I think you can also do a while str. I'm not really sure. You could test that out. Uh, but yeah. So we're gonna we say that if it's not the end of the if it's not the end of the file, then uh, we do uh, we do this, right? So then we use the get the line function again, and there's a hidden, well, th there's a different overload with our with our get line. So basically, we have our string, and we want to store the value into uh, right here, and our delimiter is what we're gonna separate each instance by. So remember in the first map tutorial, the first uh, two when we just uh, when we just did open file, we just did open file colon colon. I mean, I mean uh, the two right stream operators. What that did 
is that uh, it treated each space as a delimiter. So then when it reached the space, it put that as it returned this value, and then when it uh it would return this value, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? So what a delimiter is is that it basically takes those in the uh when it sees this value right here, uh then it will uh it will store the, all the values up until that point into this variable, and then after it will just continue until it reaches the end of that string uh that string stream, okay? Just like it's reading through a file, but it's gonna read till the end of the string stream. So we say that if the value dot length is greater than zero, uh, then we add that value to the the ten vector. Now, since our ten vector takes integers, we just have to change it to an integer uh, from a string to an integer. We do this by doing a uh, a t o i, and we put the value dot c underscore uh, string because that should be a constant char, I believe. So. Uh, so yeah, so why do why do I have a, a value dot length uh, is greater than zero? I have that there in case for whatever reason, say the person accidentally put a space there or accidentally has trailing spaces. If you have trailing spaces, uh, even though the length of the string, if the length of the string is equal to null, so even if uh, in in our string, in our our value is gonna be e when it sees a space like that, our value is gonna be equal to that, right? It's gonna be equal to null. But when we convert it to an integer, it's gonna convert the null value equal to zero, and therefore it's gonna add in some things to our map which we don't want. So to prevent that, we just say that if the value is n uh the length of the value is not greater than zero, then we don't add it. If it is greater than zero, then we add it towards our temp vector, right? And if you don't want to do it that way, there's uh, there are methods that you can use in order to trim it before you do things with, uh, like you could do find last not of and find first um, of or whatever. Um, I'm not gonna get um, into that, but you could search those uh, search up those functions uh, on the internet. But you could trim it before. But with this, it makes it easier. So once we do this, we add this t um, to our ve vector, and when we use the function push back, it's basically adding it to the vector. So, for example, say our vector size is zero right now, so there's nothing in our vector. So when we do push back, say we add in the value zero, right? Then our vector size becomes one. So then to identify that vector would be temp vector uh, zero, right? Just like an array, it starts at the element zero and so on and so forth. So we're just basically adding values to temp vector. After we've done that and we've added all the vectors to vec um, the temp vector, then we have to add these this to the multi-dimensional vector to the 2D vector, which is the vector of vectors. So we add in that line of the vector into our map vector. So for so what this is how it's going to work so the what what's going to happen is that we're going to get this line we're going to store all the values within the temp vector and once you store it in the temp vector then we put it into our map vector so our map vector 0 map vector 0 is going to represent the first element in the map vector uh, in our into our map the first element is going to represent the line number right it's going to represent the line number and then the second element is going to represent the number within that line okay so it's going to represent uh this number right here and uh it's important to know that because uh, before when we had our map we had our um all the x values we had our load counter x or whatever our x value was in here and our y values were in here so uh for example um like if we for example if our x was uh say 2 or whatever uh, if our x was equal to 1 and our y was equal to 1 we'd be drawing this value over here and this one if our x is equal to 2 this is going to be this is going to or if it's equal to 1 it's representing line number 1 the, the second line i mean and then it's going to go across so it it draws it differently so in reality it's going y x instead of x y uh and I know that might sound a bit confusing, but what we'll get more into that that um once we start drawing. So basically, when we get this line, we store this line within our map vector, and then we get a new one, and then we store with that in within our map vector, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so that is it for the lone map. So if we go down to the draw map, don't forget to change uh this. 
so we're going to go ahead to draw a map. What we need to do is we don't have a map size x and a map size y. The good thing about the vector class is that they have a size. Uh, so first of all, we say that i uh, loops from i to less than the size of it. And then we say j loops to um, j is that then map i dot size. So what is this saying? So the map dot size is representing how many line numbers there are or how many columns there are. And map i dot size is how many elements are within that that row, right? So for example, um, like what I was saying before, uh, if I get on my map file, uh, this one uh, map dot size is representing these numbers one two three four th this the column number or the row number or whatever and then the uh, the the map si the map i dot size is representing which number w within that row okay so uh, the reason so then now uh, now that we do that we need to switch around how we draw it so we have to switch before this was i times block size and j times block size i times block size and j times block size. We have to change it to j times block size, i times block size, j times block size plus block size, and i times block size plus block size. Why do we have to do this? Because the way we're drawing it is different. The j's now are representing the x coordinate, and the y and the i's now are representing the i coordinate. The i's representing the column number, and the j's are representing the the uh the row um the element within that row, right? So so yeah, so we have to switch that around. Uh, if we don't do it, then it will draw. If we don't do it this way, it will draw it inverted. But just to see what we get, if we run this program. Uh, so we get our map and we have the added two values at the end that we've added so uh, it doesn't they don't all have to be uniform width and just before we end this tutorial I never showed you creating my map uh, but here's the uh, the multi-dimensional vector right here so we create it put it into loan map and we put it into our draw function and we run it so that is this, so that is it for this tutorial hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and bye